to return to my theme mentioned earlier, that religion is founded on belief in a god or gods, because uh, our method here is to look at religion even before Christianity, even before the notion of God became refined as a result of the Hebrew scriptures and Christian uh, commentary uh, as we have it in the New Testament. A philosopher's analysis of religion then must begin with a study of the nature of the act of assent to certain principles or propositions, namely that there is a God. We have to uh, accept certain uh, propositions, and I think these can be reduced uh, to three basic propositions. The way uh, I find them articulated is that there is a God, that reality consists in more than spatial, temporal, physical, and mental events, that history is guided and controlled by non-human forces, that individual existence does not terminate with the cessation of bodily processes. Now, assent to these propositions can be generated by philosophical considerations or result in a more or less gratuitous act of faith. Faith I am defining for my purposes here as the personal act of assent to propositions acknowledged to be true, but for which there is no evidence, scientific or otherwise. Faith may entail hope or trust in a person or an institution, but intellectual assent to some intellectually articulatable truth is primary. A religious act of faith, though similar to other acts of faith, differs in its object. Its object is God. And in the conviction that for at least some of its propositions, no evidence is forthcoming. Now, I don't want to deny, and we will see plenty of evidence for it when I discuss Greek and uh, Stoic notions of religion, I don't want to deny that there can be a natural religion generated from purely philosophical considerations. But because philosophy is limited to a few, there will not be the necessary numbers to create a community of philosophical theists, if you will. A community of believers is required not only for religion to exist, but for it to maintain itself, to develop, and to exert a social and cultural influence. From the ascent to God's existence, then, or with a recognition of a superior power, which is in some fashion ultimately responsible for the course of natural events, certain things follow. If, if you believe that, then other things are entailed. Implied is a recognition of human dependence, human finiteness. An admission of dependence may lead to reverence and love of God. These attitudes will be expressed differently within different cultural contexts and with different degrees of sophistication. The degree of sophistication in the intellectual tools utilized by the believer will determine the character of the belief and the resulting religion. Religious bodies arise as men attempt to collectively worship or to pay homage to a recognized superior being. Most religions, even if primitive, seem to include as essential features acts of worship, including the offering of sacrifice. Adoration and supplicative prayer are other acts of worship commonly found. Within revealed religions, such as Judaism and Christianity and Islam, these common tendencies are more pronounced and are given a very definite form or structure. Now, it's evident that any community which regards itself as the repository of certain truths, that is, regarding divine things, must structure itself if it is to survive. Visible churches are the natural outcome 
of the religious community's attempt to perpetuate itself. The task which a religious community must undertake are many, but some are central. One function that seems to be universally acknowledged, a universal characteristic of all religious bodies, is that of worship. Worship is sometimes, but not always, bound up with sacrifice. In any case, a priesthood comes into being. Men are set apart who, by public exa acts, by example, show the way, teach. They are the masters of rite and ritual. They lead a community of believers. So the definition, conservation, and development of doctrine is an important function, and I think is analogously found in all religious groups. There is need for a body of teachers who by office are selected for learning and holiness. It then happens that that body, call it a church, is of necessity an educator and its leaders consequently teachers, even when their primary fr function may be the direction of worship. The bodily welfare of the members of that society and of society at large is a concern only when you have a religious group. Uh, otherwise, it's personal charity, but religious groups do act in a charitable fashion. In the West, from biblical times on, religious groups have been concerned with the care of the sick, the homeless, the orphan, the widow. Christ himself taught that these are appropriate acts. Since worship requires ritual and suitable visible structures, the church may develop as a patron of the arts. Equally as important as the development of doctrine is the development of ritual. Doctrine will develop through dialectic. The fortunes of doctrine, the province of theologians, will rise and fall with the state of learning at the time. Theologians develop languages and methodologies in order to probe the depths of the faith that they have received. The theologies can be plural in number uh, while remaining faithful to the basic deposit of the faith. Uh, theology or the language of theologians can be subjected to philosophical analysis. Religious discourse can be submitted to analysis by logic, by formal semantics. One can ask, what are the logical structures of faith, the truth uh, conditions of faith? In this first segment, we do not have time to go into that, but we will return to many of these themes uh, as we move into our, take a break, move into our second segment and in subsequent lectures. Mm -hmm.